Welcome to Suncoast Spotlight, the regional talk show that tells you what's happening on the Suncoast in movies, television, and much more. I'm your host, Jeannie Corcoran, director of the Sarasota County Film and Entertainment Office. And this program is created and produced by Sarasota County Technical Institute, SCTI, the Sarasota County Channel, and our Film Commission. We have some great guests today, Carl and Rhonda Wilson, independent filmmakers of several notable projects who recently screened their second full-length rough cut of Catching Junior Tate, a quirky action comedy shot almost entirely in our area, and Victor Young, filmmaker, mentor, entrepreneur, noted area businessman and philanthropist, who has just finished his second full-length movie here on the Sun Coast as well, and we'll learn more about both of those, as well as his future plans, coming right up. Welcome back. With us today are Carl and Rhonda Wilson, filmmakers, producers, directors, writers, multi-talented people, and they've just uh, finished the first rough cut of their second full-length feature film called Catching Junior Tate. Their first was Breaking Up with Rosie. And I'm going to start it right off with saying, how does it feel to have your second one in the can, even though you're not finished with post? You must feel a great sense of accomplishment. Yes, it, it is. It's pretty amazing. Um, I think our mind were always go, 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 you know, po both personal life and, and business life that sometimes when I actually stop and make myself think about it, it, it is, it, it's exciting and, and pretty amazing to see what we've been able to accomplish in such a small amount of time. I see a lot of short films. I, I meet a lot of filmmakers who do shorts and they do them as demos and they do them as sizzles. But you have jumped in with both feet doing full length projects from the beginning, really. Um, Breaking Up With Rosie led you to Catching Junior Tate, tell me how that transitioned, how you went from one to the other, what inspired it, or was it always planned to do one right after the other for full-length films? I think that um, when we started doing feature length uh, with Breaking Up With Rosie, um, I don't think that we really um, thought too much about doing anything other than feature length films. And we have a few scripts that I had written, you know, that we've had for a really long time. and. We actually were planning on working on one of those as our next feature, um, but it's a little too ambitious for the level that we we were at. So we decided to do another one. So um, I had this idea swimming around inside my head for a few years, and I just thought I would go ahead and start writing that and kind of write that around our capabilities and our ability to um, you know make it happen on a, on a much smaller budget than we normally, again, a larger budget than Breaking Up With Rosie, but much smaller than most people are used to, to seeing and hearing, so. I'm, I'm amazed at what you accomplished with such small budgets. Um, Breaking Up With Rosie looked great. This looked even better. So many actors, lots of locations. How did you handle it logistically? I mean, with a small budget, how did you make that budget stretch to have so many locations, so many actors? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, first of all, we did not sleep for... <laughs> A few months. Um, I, I really don't know. I think we just, you know, we pre-production. We put so much time in pre-production, and it just makes, you know, the production side of it go that much smoother. But we spend, you know, a good few months in pre-production. You know, planning everything out and, and scheduling, and then, you know, ultimately just sticking to the budget. Once you're actually producing, you have to force yourself because it's easy to want to, you know, step out of that. Sometimes things go wrong or you need this extra or this you know this thing or that but you just have to stay within your budget um you know to make it work to be able to finish the project out you know through completion and tell me a little bit about your actors how you found them how you chose your leading man because what a great mix they were i i was very impressed with the diversity of the characters and every personality popped every personality was distinctly different than every other one the way it was written was very clever um, I think um, we had a couple carryovers from Breaking Up With Rosie, um, so it made it easier when I was writing um, to know this is the type of personality I have to deal with, so I'll, I'll plug that in in, in these scenes. Uh, Mark and Greg, who are a comedy pair um, in the That's film. Mark Troy. Mark Troy and Greg Burgess, who were, uh, com they were both in Breaking Up With Rosie. Um, I, I know Mark Troy had sent in, when, when he auditioned for Breaking Up With Rosie, he sent us his... Um, his reel, and we saw a couple comedic um, things that he had been in that were, um, he did a great job. He showed that he had a really good um, uh, talent for comedy. So, you know, we, and he was the right age and range and whatever for the part, so we cast him in that, and he did such a, a good job in Breaking Up With Rosie that we thought, 
you know, here's a guy we can bring on into uh, catching Junior Tate. And, and um, the guy who played Junior Tate, uh, he was also in Breaking Up with Rosie. He was, um, he, he played a totally different character. Um, and uh, we were very impressed with Jesse, uh, Jesse St. Louis, uh, who, who plays Cat Junior Tate. Uh, he played one of the main roles in, in Breaking Up with Rosie and um, was very uh, well versed, very good actor. Um, he, he, at the time, wasn't SAG yet. He was, um, he was equity. And so um, I really like working with equity actors um, because you know, or people who have a lot of experience in theater because you know that they're, they're used to memorizing the whole script and they're used to memorizing their blocking. And so um, you know that they're going to show up prepared. So. And they're not going to trip over the scenery either. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to require 27 takes because they didn't learn their lines. R right, right, exactly. Right. As I always so. found, theater actors are, uh, sometimes they're too big for the screen. Theater actors are very talented, but sometimes they can't yeah. dial it down and be intimate with a camera. Did you struggle with that at all? Um, not with Jesse, and uh, actually not with Chris either. Chris is, a, uh, is another equity actor. He played um, the Malibu character, which is the the, the, the other main role, mm -hmm. lead lead character. Um, Malibu and Joe. Malibu, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he um, actually went to FSU here, conservatory, um, was involved with Oslo and, and stuff, mm -hmm. and so um, we tracked him down, um, and uh, you know uh, he basically took on the role for us and and uh, he was great we we absolutely uh, were very happy with his performance as well I was I was a little nervous about it because he had not a whole lot of um, experience with film mm -hmm. um, he had done a few shorts uh, here with Ringling and whatnot but um, I was a little nervous about the the over-the-top factor that you might have but uh, he, he dialed it down really well and, and did a really really good job that took was, direction I well. was very impressed so. we're gonna take a short break here we'll be right back Welcome back. With us are Rhonda and Carl Wilson, and we're talking about their full-length feature film, Catching Junior Tate, as well as their previous feature film, Breaking Up with Rosie. I want to ask a little bit about your actors. Tell me a few of them by name. We interviewed uh, Slick from Slick's Garage. We interviewed a lot of your character actors, Steve Heinz, people like that. Tell me a little bit about how you chose those people for those roles, and what role did, did Slick in his garage play for you? Well, I, I will uh, mention quickly, with our first film, Breaking Up with Rosie, um, you know, we put, I put casting calls out all over the place, every uh, option I could on the internet I could find. And we probably had about 150 people submit, which was great. Um, the project had about maybe 75, so you kind of had a 50-50 chance of getting a part on that, that project. Um, with Catching Junior Tate, I used pretty much the same resources, and we had almost 800 people wow. submit from out of state, New York, um, you know, all over the U.S. So we were very overwhelmed with the response. Um, and it made the casting process very hard, which was great because there was a lot of talent to choose from. Um, so yeah, we were able to use a lot of local talent as well as, you know, some from outside of the area. Um, so it's a, it's a fun process. We did uh, work with Slick from Slick's Garage. Um, Who now has a TV show he called now Highway a, to yes, Sell. Yes, Highway right. to Sell, um, which is show. a great show. I recommend you all watching it. Um, but he, you know, he, he was very talented. He has a great location. Um, so it was great working with him. Um, you know, and I know we, we use so many different actors from our first film as well that had, you know, some, some smaller parts, but um, I liked Ray Rodriguez playing a, a Mexican policeman, and, and it was a lot of bilingualism in there, too. Are yes. you going to be doing subtitles where people are speaking Spanish when you get in your final cut? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be putting subtitles in. I know some people were asking us to put some subtitles <laughs> in for our character who does... Um, uh, he's, he's mute, who does the um, uh, sign language. Clip. Oh, I don't I, think he needs yeah, it. He was it, no. hilarious. He was I love the mute character. That was his first role ever. He'd never acted our, before our that. Our audition actually was his first audition that he yeah. had gone to. So he was very talented. I he think was. it's just was, getting, you know, past that. Uh, the buddy cop thing, buddy bad guy thing in their case in the car was very funny. I, yeah. There was a lot of humor in it. I said when we were leaving, it reminded me very much it had a feeling of lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Not as violent. Yeah. Um, not, not as... Uh, is R-rated with bad language, but uh, it had that very quirky, funny, edgy, uh, surprising, everything surprised you about where it was going next. And how did you come about that idea? Tell me a little bit about how you came up with the idea for Catching Junior Tate. Um, usually they start with like, um, you know, like a different, uh, you, you'll get like a, 
a scene or some dialogue or something like that and and like the 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 bar fight in in the in the Mexican bar um that's kind of the dialogue where you get the idea and you think that would be a funny scene and then usually I I go there and I and I, I kind of expand out from there um I you know just had some ideas for some things uh usually it's like uh, I have a, a a buddy of mine and I think man he would be really good for this role and even though he wasn't even in the film mm -hmm. you know you kind of start writing with that idea and then um you go from there um, but yeah, I definitely wanted to, to make the characters as diverse as possible. I really wanted to create a lot of, um, you know, uh, you know, variety for well, you, what you, you would see. You achieved it. You so. really did. So tell me, um, where do you go from here? What's next for you? What's on your timeline? Well, we've just started uh, the film festival submission process. So we're, you know, it's kind of a wait and see. How, how that goes, we're hopeful. Um, we're gonna submit to more than we did with our first project. Um, our first project, we did submit to a few. We ended up getting in uh, the Gasparilla International Film Festival here in Ybor City. Um, you know, so this time around, we're gonna expand our, our submission process a little more and kind of see how that goes. Um, hopefully it'll lead to finding a distribution for it. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'll just kind of, like I said, wait and see how it goes. And do you have another project in the pipeline? Do you have another film you're going to be working on? Or are you going to devote all the next six months to a year to making Catchy Junior Tate your, your focus? I think, um, I think we'll, we definitely have, uh, once we kind of tighten up um, Catching Junior Tate, um, I, I have a, a screenplay, which was the one we were going to do. And, and just like with we, we went, we considered uh, breaking up with Rosie a level and catching Junior Tate a level, we want to go to the next level with the next film, and um, basically uh, use that screenplay. Since it was a little ambitious for for where we were at with catching Junior Tate, now I think I think we're ready to take on a project yes. like that. And, well, I and certainly hope that it leads you to having more people come on board to help you, investors, if you're out there and you want to work with indie filmmakers, come on out of the woodwork. They really need you, and I hope that you get a continually growing team and yet all these great people you've been wor working with I hope that they stay with you for the long run and everyone grows everyone succeeds yes. and yeah. tell me if you had one goal for catching Junior Tate ultimately where would it be what would it be Netflix Hulu big screen it, it would be screens. great to see it on the big screen mm -hmm. you know it, it definitely has that indie feel to it but it, it's funny um, you know, we had sent a survey out after the screening that we did and got great feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Carl's clearly a very talented writer. Um, I think that's the biggest part. You've got to start with a great script, and he's a, a great writer. And, you know, I, yeah, it would be great to see it on the big screen for sure. So. Well, I hope it makes it there for you. I want to thank you both so much for being with us. Thank you for spending time on Suncoast Spotlight, and we'll be looking for your future successes. Thank Carl you. and Rhonda Wilson. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. With us now is Victor Young, filmmaker, mentor, entrepreneur, noted area businessman, philanthropist, many, many hats. And he has just wrapped up his second full-length feature film shot extensively here on the Sun Coast. So, Victor, you just finished Stratosphere. Yes. Full-length feature film, drama, action drama, human dynamic of, of people who get in trouble and circumstances that take them where they don't want to be. Where is it now? Is it in post? It is in post. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a great film. It, um, it, it, it uh, really evolved based upon a, a interesting group of actors. You know, it started off as, as one character who was designed to be this very hated character and this bad person. And, and uh, you know, Joel King did such a fantastic job portraying the character of Jason that uh, changed the feel of the film, film a little bit. He ended up being this really nice, likable guy who just made bad decisions. So uh, <laughs> we had to come back and create a little bit more dialogue to fill that in. But yes, uh, fantastic film shot here in Sarasota primarily. Which we so appreciate. Sarasota yes. County is, is just eager to have indie filmmaking and we think you're, you know, you're one of our local indie filmmaking stars with world-class talent, world-class goals. So. Thank you. We love shooting here in Sarasota. Um, we, we originally um, had, had, met, had scheduled to shoot in another city and um, things just weren't going as smooth as we wanted them to go 
And at the last minute, obviously, we, we said, hey, let's look at Sarasota. And I'd just like to thank you and your team for responding and just doing a fantastic job on a very short time frame of being able to uh, uh, meet our demands with locations and, and uh, uh, everything else you guys permits and just everything that you push through the pipe for us. And uh, it, made, it made us uh, want to shoot here. It excited mm -hmm. everyone and, and just uh, energized everyone to shoot here in Sarasota. So it was interesting to see. Well, we have a great, we have a great support system, not only governmentally, you know, Sarasota County is great about trying to help filmmakers and streamline permitting with us and, and make everything flow pretty smoothly and pretty affordably, but we also have great private sector businesses that really work. I, you used Bentley's Hotel Absolutely. down in the Osprey area, and from what I understand, they couldn't have been more helpful, couldn't have been more cooperative. Bentley's was, uh, oh my gosh, it, it was a great location. We were able to pick up uh, five locations. Wow. Uh, That's a lot. From, from one, one property, <laughs> which we, we needed because it was a multiple location uh, shoot. Um, and literally, we, we, you know, we were probably in 14 different locations. So it was, it was good to, to be on one location for a while and let the cast and crew relax, <laughs> you know, from all the mobilizations and, uh, uh, and, and, and reassignments. It, it, was, it was definitely uh, like taking a breather and allowing everyone to maximize their talent at their skills at that time at Bentley, so we needed that. Yeah. Sure, and they have, you know, they have so many naturally uh, useful uh, elements there, from food and, and restaurants to hotel rooms to the tiki bar yeah. to the yeah. tiki huts and so forth. It's, Ab absolutely, it's the, and the production value was high. Yes. So, you know, we didn't have to do a lot of set design, so that, that also made our jobs a lot easier as well. So. Mm -hmm. It's perfect location. Well, I enjoyed the premiere you did of the trailer recently. We have some clips of it that we'll be showing. And that seemed to be a, a great cast that you assembled. They all seem to have a sense of family now. Did, did you see that on set? Did they all bond well? And Most definitely. We, we had a mix of, uh, of talent um, as far as cast and crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you were able to see some of the less experienced actors uh, really step their game up and work closely with some of the more experienced act experienced actors. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an interesting dynamic to watch, and uh, so we definitely got the most out of our newer people based upon that relationship and that dynamic. Um, and same thing with crew. I mean, there were some very experienced individuals on, on crew um, who really slowed down a little bit and was able to maximize what our interns and some of our newer people brought to the table. So it was a, a great dynamic. And they also stayed in touch. So it's, it's interesting because at the wrap party, we were able to see, you know, it wasn't like reconnecting everyone. Everyone had, you know, already made these relationships. Stayed together. Uh, yeah, they stayed together. So it was, it was interesting. Tell me how um, you and Erica Sutherland came to know one another and a little bit about how you mentored her through this process because she is, her background is primarily theater. Correct. She teaches and so forth. And, um, Tell me that transition, huh? Erica, Erica and I met uh, in 2010. Um, I was shooting a television pilot, and uh, she came on board as a, as a first AD. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting television pilot. Uh, it was it was supernatural based, mm -hmm. and. Um, which I understand the History Channel has tried to talk you out of a couple times. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I just we just need them to get a little bit more uh, convincing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, so we worked together on that project, and it was a had a lot of challenges. I mean, when you're working in a an environment that's actually you're trying to ca capture these supernatural experiences, there is no take two, or there's no hey, can we re-roll that, or you know, change the light and let's do it again. So uh, it was a very summon, summon, summon that uh, that entity back and let's do that one more time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, you know, based upon her ability to uh, really um, adapt in that environment, uh, I knew we'd, we'd work together again. And so we stayed in touch over, over time and actually um, started working on uh, writing Stratosphere together. Um, and in 2011, late 2011, and it, uh, it, it took three or four different twists and turns and shapes. And finally, in 2000, end of 2012, we finished it. and, and uh, 
put together a, a production budget and a schedule, and, and we made it happen. Wow, and the trailer looks fantastic. We're going to take a short break here, but we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're with Victor Young, filmmaker, entrepreneur, businessman, and all-around interesting kind of person. And Victor, we're talking to you about Stratosphere, the feature film that you've completed with uh, Eric Suther uh, Erica Sutherland, your director and writer. Correct. You co-wrote it with her. But I want to ask you a little bit about another project that you just wrapped up as well, another feature film, full-length, independent. Um, tell me a little bit about Paradise, Florida, if you can. Paradise, Florida, a uh, completely different project. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a coming-of-age drama, and uh, it was written by a young man here named Tony Stopperin. And uh, Tony and I met uh, a few years back on the on the set of uh, Lucky Six. Sure. And so uh, we we talked and stayed in touch, and over time, and had several meetings, and and he expressed his interest to shoot another project and produce another project, and asked was I interested in producing with him, and and uh, so I said yes. So we we you know started talking about it and looking at the script and, and, and evolving it and making some changes and uh, until it became what it is today, uh, you know, and getting a shooting script. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was a little bit of a different process. Um, I hadn't really produced a project with another person in a long time, so it takes on a whole other sure. <laughs> you know, feel when you do that, uh, especially when another producer uh, has actually written the script, so it, so it's very close to him. It's very, 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 very near and dear to his heart. Right, sure. <laughs> so it, it was interesting. It was it was kind of nice, uh, uh, but it did just create a completely different dynamic when you're when you're working from someone else's heart, mm -hmm. and I'm working from a budget and a timeline. <laughs> but <laughs> we actually worked together well. Mm -hmm. um, the film was shot uh, on red, and uh, it looks beautiful. Uh, great locations again. You know, Missy Malloy, who works with the Film Commission right, here in one Sarasota. Right, our freelance location specialist. You got it. She's just done a lot of projects. Got us some great locations mm -hmm. here, and, and uh, um, you know, really work with a great crew. Work with a lot of Ringling students and, and ex Ringling students, or prior Ringling students who graduated, mm -hmm. um, who also did a fantastic job. And uh, so once again, we had some crew that was more experienced, who'd been in the business for a while, and some really you know, new cast and crew as well. That's great. I mean, a lot of mentorship going on. And Absolutely. A lot of training. I, I remember when I spoke with Erica Sutherland at the premiere of your trailer, she was talking about how you truly mentored her through her process of doing a full-length feature. And you mentioned then, too, that sometimes there's a conflict between the business side and the creative side. Absolutely. Does that happen in, I, mean, I assume it happens in all of every, the Every projects. project. It always happens. Um, you know, there are scenes that are, that are beautiful mm -hmm. that are just cinematic or touching. And then you look at it, and it's like, okay, what film is that for? <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah, did so, you shoot that? So it's now it's time to pull it, you know, mm -hmm. um, to get either time down or, or continuity or, or, you know, even, you know, and you never want to write for commercial reasons. I, I feel you, you always want to make it, you know, an artistic expression to be able to tell a story beautifully. And, and uh, however, sometimes when you're thinking about what's being sold and you're looking at the rags every day and, and you're seeing what, what distributors are buying and you see what networks are looking for, you kind of want to make sure you have some of those elements in, <laughs> in your story so that it's, it's, it's a retail story unless you're actually shooting it for film festivals and to be able to express yourself and using it for a calling card. Right. Still, at some point, you know, it has to be a professional product that you can monetize Absolutely. so you can make your next product. Absolutely. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, surprising to many people because you are such a uh, very successful and very well-known entrepreneur and businessman in our business community, a lot of people don't realize you've been in show business for a long time. Absolutely. Since um, you were just a toddler, yeah. Yeah, practically, since practically. you were very young. Yeah. I started started my, my career at a Fox affiliate, um, worked in master control, production, was a switcher, puller, did voice work, um, you know, left there, actually produced a sports show, left there, went to Sports Radio 910, produced a morning show for Scott Brantley and Bob Yuko, um, again, did a lot of voice work there, then got my own show on air at a, uh, basically a pop station, I uh, was on air personality, and then left there and went to an urban station and as, a, as a morning host on air. So, um, you know, from production to voice to, you know, uh, switching and running camera equipment. Uh, I even did a lot of acting at the time. And then the interesting part was uh, I also had a background in, in, in wrestling. Professional and, and wrestling. Professional wrestling. Yeah. So I wrestled in box when I was young and, and uh, had an opportunity to uh, wrestle um, little little WCW and 
Matter of fact, my last match was a tag team match with Jumbo Beretta and Kane. So. Oh wow, he's but, huge. Yeah, three hundred pounders, two three hundred pounders. My brother and I tag team with. So my knees didn't hold up for that very well. So had to move on. So that was the end of your wrestling career when your knees said no. That was the end of my wrestling career. You know, one of the things I did take away from wrestling was the fact that you had to have the ability to connect with an audience in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. So there were three different types of guys in wrestling. There was a face, a heel, and a neutral guy. And you, <laughs> you, you wanted to be the bad guy or the good guy. You never wanted to be the guy who didn't have a personality because you were the guy that uh, the Ultimate Warriors music came on and he came out to the ring and just pummeled you for 30 seconds. So you wanted to be a good guy. Well, I'm glad you have made your transition to be with us and, and to be in Sarasota County and on the Sun Coast through Tampa, through Sarasota, through Manatee County. And um, I think you just have a really exploding career ahead of you in a whole new way as a filmmaker, an executive producer, and an on-camera talent. Thank you. So I hope that you'll continue to do it here. Do you see that in your future? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually I actually have a third film for 2015 that's on the, on the schedule right now. So oh, good, good. hopefully we can start pre-production in the first quarter of 2015. So. Wonderful. Well, we'll look forward to helping you any way we can. Thank you. And we'll bring uh, Victor Young back again one day soon. Thank you for being with us, Victor. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.